it's the band then whose single Blue well we, well we fell in love with really on this programme and we played a lot as well on the, the Recommends uh, show uh, to the point where and I mean we haven't really dabbled at all in home recorded sessions uh, on this programme or thrown out weights what little weights we have uh, behind a group uh, by uh, putting out session tracks recorded uh, at their home studios or wherever but we've made an exception in this case so here's the first of two tracks which they kindly recorded for us this is New Dad and this is a version of Blue a session they recorded for us well I was going to say at home but actually I don't know where they recorded it but here's someone who can tell us uh, singer and guitarist with new dad Julie Dawson welcome to the show so where where did you find to record this how did it how did it work how did you manage to get this together yeah hi Steve thanks for having me um we actually recorded it in our practice space um it was like the day before lockdown and it was kind of like um a bit of a rush but we yeah it was kind of a makeshift job but um, yeah, we got it done anyway um, at the practice studio. And have, as restrictions have changed, have you managed to get together to write and rehearse at all this year? Have you managed to see um, each other and, you know, I because I imagine there's probably a backlog of ideas that you want to throw uh, around between each other, is there? Yeah, um, well, we continue to, like, work on songs during lockdown. Like, we send ideas back and forth, like, kind of projects and stuff. Um but yeah, luckily when restrictions ease, we were able to do this. So we're just kind of using the time to our advantage and like writing a lot, like working on practicing, like making us making sure we sound good live. And mm. um, so yeah, we did we did just kind of make the most of the time really. Um, 
And t- tell us a little bit about the bands and where you're from. I've never been to Galway, uh, but it's it's one of it's one of the European capitals of culture this year, Galway, which must be quite frustrating in a way because that would have would have probably meant more had COVID not arrived, of course. But uh, also, does it have a mus- much of a, a music scene? I, I mean, a normal a normal times. Are there many places to play live? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a pretty small scene now, um, to be honest. Like, there, but there are great, like, a few great venues, like the Roaching Dove. Um, we play there quite a lot. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's a small enough scene, but it's a great scene. There are like a lot of really cool bands coming out of Galway for sure. What was the first gig you ever went to? Oh, um, I think it was actually like an X Factor live tour. <laughs> What's this? Well, that explains the, yeah. well, that explains the, the, the strength of melody in the songs. Uh, and do, do, you, yeah. do, you, do you now, though, uh, and I, I, obviously I know because uh, you're barely out of school, some of the band, do you, do, you, um, do, you, do you manage to go to gigs together as a band? Do you have, I mean, like, almost like works night out? Um. Yeah, I, we would go to gigs often. Like, we were supposed to go to Pixie together this, like, summer just gone. Obviously, that got cancelled, but we go to, like, all the local gigs, um, see all the local bands and all that. So it's very supportive, then? Everyone turns out to see everyone else? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so gigs you've done, I mean, I'm sure there's probably one or two you'll want to forget. Uh, because, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, best and worst, was, was there a gig that you did... Uh, where you thought, Do you know, we've cracked, we've turned a corner now. I think we might be all right now. This might actually be working. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, that would have been like a few months ago because, like, we've been playing together for four years, but every gig before, like, a few months ago was just awful. And, <laughs> um, but yeah, we definitely kind of turned a corner a few months ago when we started writing, like, the singles that are out now when we were just confident in our sound. So, we played a few before lockdown that we were like really happy with, and then we decided like now's a good time to release music because we were just more confident in ourselves. Who first broached the idea of being in a band then? Because some of you were at school together. Who's who, who blinked first and said, "You know, do you know what? We should form a band." Um, I, I, me, Anla, and Fiacra were like together in a cafe, and I think, I think it was me. I'm not sure, but everyone was kind of interested. Like Anla played the bass, and Fiacra was a drummer, so we were like, "Oh, let's just try it out." We mostly just started it because we needed, like, something to do for our music practical in school. <laughs> um, so we didn't take it too seriously. Right. But, uh, right. uh, you know, it was that's what started it off. I mean, he's, uh, to your credit, I mean, you've mentioned, you know, knowing when you're ready. Because some bands are quite impatient, you know, so it's to, to wait quite mm-hmm. a, a long time before putting something out. I mean, other bands would have just, you know, strode right in there and posted something online. But did you? Was there a point? Was there a, I suppose, a standard that you'd set yourself before you thought we can share this? Or were you just too previously embarrassed to tell anyone about what you were doing? Yeah, I think we were just kind of the types where we were just kind of embarrassed. Um, so we kind of, I don't know, we just didn't want to look back on something and like be embarrassed by it. So we just wanted mm. to make sure. Um, we were happy with how it sounded because before that we were definitely not confident like any gig we did we were like that was a disaster <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're just hoping no one recorded that one what about musical yeah. what about musical influences because you've all posted I think playlists uh, on a certain music streaming service and they're all quite different and some of the music is very current and some of it's from well, decades ago I mean for, for instance who or who or how were you introduced to bands like The Cure Oh, they like we've all loved the Cure. Like growing up, like they are just my all-time favorite. And same with all the guys in the band. Like, um, yeah, it's it's just we grew up listening to that, and um, they're definitely like the biggest influence that we have collectively because we do all have very music, different music tastes. Mm. But we all love the Cure and we love Pixies, and that's kind of what connects the dots. I think just those kinds of influences and are, are you all quite voracious music listeners are you and are you, are you always trying to get other people into in the band into the things that you like um i don't yeah we all listen a lot but um i think it's good like it's good to have you know different influences when you're songwriting because you know you don't if we all liked the same stuff it would all just sound like one thing and i think it's good that like everyone like brings something to the table, um, you know, and 
that's what like just the kind of a yeah, different sound I guess one of the things I'd say one of the things that I really enjoy uh, about your music is just the it's the lightness of touch I mean it's it's quite gentle in places although ironically that, that it's the gentility of it but that gives it quite a strong emotional power I think going back to bands like the Cocteau Twins or more recently something like the XX you know I mean? there's a there's a point where you don't have to push a song too hard and you can actually um, make a very, some very pr provoking provocative points while still being quite restrained you see what I mean yeah definitely thank you um, yeah I think it's it's hard to know when to stop sometimes like you're writing a song but I think yeah I guess just having everyone else there to say I think this is enough and that kind of, you know, it's never too much going on, I feel like. Mm. And tell us about the two songs in the session then. Blue, which we've been playing a lot of, which uh, we just heard. I mean, it's almost uh, tailor-made for, for some people's lockdown in a way because as, as far as I can make out, it's about being sad and being with somebody else and because you're quite sad, you stop bringing them down because you don't have the energy to get mm. yourself up to, you know, engage in a way. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people go through that, definitely. Um, yeah, it's just really like sometimes if you're in a bad headspace, you'll use that as an excuse to treat someone unfairly, and it's kind of just talking about that, I guess, and how that's not really good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the one which we're about to hear, uh, which is called I Don't Recognise You, uh, tell us about this old song, new song, what's it about? Um, it's actually just a new song, yeah, um, new enough anyway, um, but it's, I think it's something that a lot of people experience in their lives, like that they see in friends, and it's just kind of, um, when someone you love, like, loses their way, and sometimes that can alter how you perceive them, and, like, it, they just change in your eyes sometimes, but, um, yeah, it's just kind of talking about that. I think a lot of people go through that, especially, like, growing up, just seeing friends and stuff like that, just go through things like that. And I mean, it's impossible to make any plans. But in a uh, in your heads, what would you want out of next year? Hoping we can get back to playing some gigs, uh, write some songs, and maybe put another record out. Yeah, um, we recorded an EP in Belfast um, with Chris Ryan, who previously mixed our other tracks. And um, it was it was our first time in a studio. Uh, I don't recognise you was recorded in um, in that studio and. The EP will be coming out later next year, or early next year. Um, so once that's out, hopefully maybe we'll be able to do some kind of, a few gigs maybe. Um, that's what we're hoping for anyway, but we're really, really excited for people to hear the EP because it's we started getting mixes back and it's all really coming together and we're really excited about it. Oh, that must be brilliant. Who did you play it to first? I always ask this. When you get it back outside of the band, is there someone you go, have a listen to this? Oh, mom and dad, they're always, it? <laughs> they always want to hear everything, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and in what setting? Does everyone sit in the front room? Do you uh, gingerly put it on the stereo in the front room? Is that it? Yeah, well, like, they'll be driving me somewhere and then they'll kind of sneakily say that they want to hear something and then I have to put it on because <laughs> I can't get away. <laughs> That is, that's true there's no escaping it then is there Sneaky. Uh, yeah <laughs> Julie it's been lovely talking to you give our regards to uh, the rest of the band thank you for putting these tracks together for us and uh, we wish you all the best uh, in the future and hopefully at some point we'll be able to catch up properly but thank you yeah no thank you for having me and thank you everyone at BBC Six for like all the support it's just we never thought a few months ago that we'd be getting so much love for me and it's just made the so much it's given us so much and we're just so grateful oh bless you uh, it's uh, new dad here's another track then in session for us and this is called i don't recognize you Through floating down the 
session a session they recorded uh, for us the first track blue a version of uh, the most recent single and that i think will be the, the next one or uh, we'll certainly feature then on the ep which is uh, due early next year one of the tracks uh, as Judith just said uh, recorded in belfast for the ep that was i don't recognize you uh, they did a third track for us as well which uh, you can hear uh, tonight uh, well in just uh, as the night finishes uh, on six music recommends uh, my recommends program tonight at midnight we'll have another live track uh, from new dad's uh, version of one of their previous singles cry that's tonight at midnight but thank you very much once again to julie uh, for joining us and keep an eye out for them new dad in session on tea time six. BBC radio. Six. Six. we are holding the tunes down what else can you do in a crazy world